For a task as simple as leveling a 3D printer bed, there sure are a lot of different options for accomplishing it. There's mechanical probes, inductive probes, eddy current scanning probes, and probes that aren't probes at all. So with all of these options, is it possible that one of the simplest and most cost effective among them can in fact be the superior choice? This is the clicky probe, and I bet you can see where it gets its name. If this looks familiar, it's probably because this is just a limit switch, the same kind that your printer uses during homing to register the zero position. Add a few magnets, some wire, a few screws, and 18 grams worth of filament, and you'll have everything you need to build this DIY probe. The ingenious design of the probe means that you won't even have to solder anything. The electrical contacts are made with the magnets. If you want to get fancy, for a few extra dollars you can get PCB clicky, a variant of the design that uses printed circuit boards. This serves to simplify the assembly while also adding a convenient LED light for status monitoring. This kit, which comes at a cost premium as compared to the DIY option, only retails for around 20 US dollars, making this one of, if not the, most affordable probe you can buy. But just because it's inexpensive doesn't mean we're compromising on performance. Clicky is a stowable mechanical probe. It is attached to the print head during probing and docked during printing. When the print head moves to the dock location, the magnets in the probe are attracted to the opposite polarity magnets on the print head. In addition to securing the probe in place, the magnetic coupling also creates the electrical contact necessary to communicate the switch state to the firmware. With the probing operation complete, a clever wipe over the dock detaches the probe from the printhead. As opposed to an inductive probe, which uses non-contact measurement, the clicky probe measures the height of the surface directly. This has a few advantages. It means that we're measuring the actual surface we're printing on, not the metallic substrate beneath it. With clicky, the build plate doesn't need to be conductive at all, opening up the option to print on glass and other non-metallic surfaces. Inductive probes are also susceptible to thermal drift, making them less reliable at elevated temperatures. The measurements from Clicky are temperature independent. These days, nozzle probing solutions like TAP are getting a lot of attention. The advantage to this is that with the nozzle as the probe, there is no requirement to calculate the dreaded Z offset. The calculation of Z offset with Clicky isn't quite as straightforward, but with the help of Auto Z calibration plugins, the work will be done for us. This will require that you have a pin end stop for Z, as on the Voron 2.4. With this requirement met, we can run the Auto Z calibration script, which will prompt the nozzle to touch the Z end stop pin, followed by the clicky probe body touching the Z end stop pin, and the probe switch touching the bed. We'll also need to measure the distance between the probe body and the trigger position of the switch. With all of this information provided to the plugin, the calculation of Z offset is done for us. So those are the basics. Now, let's demonstrate the installation and setup process on the Trudon 2.0. More information on that in this playlist. But if you're not familiar, it's essentially a Voron 2.4 with metal and injection molded plastic instead of printed parts. I'll be using PCB Clicky for this demo. This kit was purchased from 3D Lab Tech in Canada, but there are various vendors for these kits depending on your location. The kit comes with three PCBs, one for the printhead, one for the probe, and one for a spare probe. You also need to print a few components, most of which you can download from the Clicky GitHub repository. This probe dock is custom for the Trudon. It is made to match the pre-tapped holes on the gantry. There are two versions of this design, one for the afterburner and one which is slightly longer for use with the stealth burner. The first step will be to install the provided heat set inserts into the printed parts. I have a special tool for this, but you could also use a soldering iron or a lighter and a hex wrench if that's all you have access to. The next step will be to add the magnets and screw the PCBs to the printed parts. We'll need to verify the polarity of the magnets, either using a phone app or another magnet of known polarity. Make sure to keep track of what goes where, so the probe is attracted to the printhead mount and not repelled from it. The dock gets a magnet too, which will help to hold the probe in place. The clicky probe will be replacing the stock inductive probe, so we'll remove that now. I demoed the disassembly of the afterburner toolhead in this video, so follow that if you need detailed instructions. In order to connect the new probe, we'll need a short segment of wire. If you're building a DIY clicky, you'll only have two wires. With PCB clicky, we need three. You might consider repurposing the wire from the stock inductive probe, in which case you'll need to cut off the probe and crimp on a 3-pin JST-XH connector. 
Take note of the ordering of the wires. You need to match the ground, power, and signal wires on the clicky PCB to those on the extruder breakup board, which requires crossing the wires. The clicky probe mounts in the same location as the inductive probe. The mounting screws are supplied with the kit. In the process of doing this install, I also decided to remove the cable chains from this printer, so things will look a little different with it all back together. But that has no bearing on this process. The probe dock simply screws to the rear extrusion on the gantry using two M3 screws. Since I'm using PCB Clicky, there's also one other small change I'll have to make to the hardware, which will be required later for AutoZ. PCB Clicky has the limit switch oriented in Y, with the plunger at the front, while DIY Clicky has the switch oriented in X, with the plunger on the left. For AutoZ, we need to press the end stop pin with the probe body, so the plunger will be below the height of the pin. With PCB Clicky, the plunger will be over the bed meaning that we need extra clearance height between the pin and the bed, or else the probe will be pressed into the bed before the end stop pin is triggered. A normal Voron spec end stop pin is 60 millimeters in length, while the Trudon one is a fair bit shorter. So if you're using PCB Clicky, you'll need to raise the pin by putting a spacer underneath it. Alternatively, you could order a replacement end stop pin when you order your Clicky kit. That's it for the assembly and installation. All that remains is the firmware configuration. This is where things get interesting. You see, I have two Trudons, one running RepRap firmware, which is what this printer ships with, and the other running Clipper. The setup and operation of the Clicky Probe is quite different between the two, which makes things confusing. I'll demonstrate both as I know there is a good percentage of users in both camps. If you appreciate the effort I put into these videos, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and consider joining me on Patreon for more great content. We'll start with RepRap. As a starting point, I use the latest version of Team Gloomy firmware. I then referred to the GitHub repository of a user called Printer Noodle, and extracted the clicky-specific components, which included the macros for docking and undocking the probe. Printer Noodle also has an implementation of AutoZ calibration on their GitHub, from which I borrowed the AutoZ scripts. Starting from the base configuration, I uploaded these components to the appropriate directories. In order to get everything working, I needed to make some adjustments to a handful of system files, such as adding calls to the probe dock and undock macros from within the home Z script. The basic configuration for Clicky happens within this file. We'll need to specify the position of the dock and the end stop pin, which we can determine by jogging the axes to these locations and taking note of the coordinates. There were quite a few more steps required for integration, but rather than elaborate on those, I'll save you the time by uploading my configuration bundle to my GitHub page. In order to install it, simply download the zip file and upload it to your printer using the Upload System Files button in the System menu. If you haven't already, you'll first need to update to the latest version of RepRap firmware. I would also recommend setting up Button Command for easy access to toggle on and off AutoZet. This entire process is covered in detail in my Trudon Beginner's Guide Part 2 video. After uploading the configuration, delete any G31 lines from your config override file and restart the printer. Then, test to make sure the clicky macros work. If the probe doesn't get picked up or docked properly, you may need to adjust the dock location in the clickstage.g file. With that working, we can then test the AutoZ. Before proceeding, verify the contents of the clicky AutoZ config file and update as required if the location of your dock or end stop pin differ from mine. You should also enter the value you measured for the switch offset. A larger value here means closer to the bed. So to be safe, round down your measurement. Now we're ready to run a test. Send this command in the console and watch to make sure the nozzle is centered on the end stop pin during the first step, and that the clicky body is centered over the pin in the second step. If it's not, adjust line five of pin xy clicky dot g. Auto Z will then probe the bed in the center and spit out a value for the Z offset that will be automatically saved to the config override. In order to verify this value, jog the printer down to the bed and test to make sure it drags on paper. If you have considerably too much or not enough squish, adjust the value of the switch offset accordingly. We'll then run a test print and watch as the first layer goes down. We can then use the baby stepping controls to adjust the offset and run the save baby step macro once we're happy with the result. This will adjust the value saved in the config override. This adjustment will be lost anytime AutoZ is rerun. So it would be better to adjust the switch offset by an equivalent amount if you want the change to be persistent. And that's it. Now, anytime we want to change the nozzle or the build plate, all we need to do is rerun AutoZ 
and the Z offset will be calculated automatically. If you're a RepRap user, you've just crossed the finish line. Congratulations. In Clipperland, I'll be following the process described by GitHub user JLAS1, who is the original creator of the Clicky Pro. We'll start by establishing a remote connection to the Clipper host via SSH. Then copy and paste these commands to download the Clicky macros. We'll then return to main sail. Open up the Clicky Pro config file and uncomment the indicated lines. Next, open the printer config file. Scroll down to the macros section and add include clicky probe config. You'll also need to comment out the safe Z home section of the config. I would suggest increasing the horizontal move Z from 10 to 15 within the quad gantry level block in order to avoid crashing the probe into the bed if the gantry is particularly out of skew. Next, navigate to the clicky variables config file and update the file according to your printer. To save you time here, you can copy and paste the values from the Trudon specific clicky config on my GitHub. Now we're ready to test. Execute the attach probe and doc probe macros and check to make sure they complete successfully. If not, you may need to adjust the position of the doc within the clicky variable config file. If all goes well, we can move on to configuring AutoZ. We'll need to SSH into the Clipper host again. Navigate to the home directory and execute the installation script which you can copy and paste from the video description. In order to keep this plugin up to date, add this block to your Moonraker config file. You'll then be notified of any updates via the update manager in the main sale interface. We'll next need to add a Z calibration block to our printer config. You can copy and paste this from my Trudon Clicky config. If you needed to adjust the position of the nozzle in Clicky variables config, adjust these values to match. You should also adjust the switch offset according to your measured value if you're not using PCB Clicky. Finally, modify your print start macro to include a call to Calibrate Z. All right, that's it for configuration. We'll now run a test by sending Calibrate Z in the console. You can then jog the print head to the center and slowly lower the Z to zero, checking the offset with the paper drag test. If it's too high or low, adjust with baby stepping, taking note of the required change. Once you're happy with the result, subtract the baby stepping value from your switch offset. This should give us a good baseline. We can then run a first layer test and determine if the offset needs further adjustment. All right, that's it. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. I hope this video was useful for you. What do you think of the Clicky Pro? Is it an upgrade you'll consider doing? And what other upgrades would you like me to cover? Let me know in the comments down below. A special thanks to my patrons for supporting the production of these videos. My name's Taylor, this is YGK3D, and until next time, Happy 3D printing.